This right here, this is Star Fox. By today's standards, yeah, it ain't winning awards in graphics. Unless it's an indie title doing it intentionally, then maybe we can get away with calling it artistic. But in 1993, this was considered a technical achievement in console games. But there were a handful of other games that used it too. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island used it for sprite scaling and visual effects. And to really go back in time for me here, there was also games like Stunt Race FX. <laughs> Man, I really feel like I'm in elementary school again. I'd play Super Mario Kart over this, but I thought this looked great back in the day, even though I thought steering was harder than it needed to be, and sometimes it was hard to distinguish where the right way to go was. Look at this, is that is that a tunnel? A black hole? It looks like a solid black wall that I'll crash right into. Okay, no, it's just a tunnel after all. All right. Pants no longer shat on. All right, enough about Star Fox. Let's talk about Star Fox. Level three just doesn't give a flying fuck about your well-being. These multicolored orbs are gonna be the bane of your existence because almost every enemy has them and a direct hit will make you cry. And stage obstacles don't slouch either. The meteors in the asteroid field, the flowers and serpent heads in Fortuna, your geometry class in Sector Z, these fucking things in Macbeth, bosses actually deciding to use their bodies as full-out weapons. It's not a pleasant time and I try to hold on to every power-up as long as I possibly can. Now, if only I had some buddies by my side, although there's four of you, but you only control Fox McCloud. The rest of your team are left to just communicate with you through an intercom, and it's a good thing Fox is fluent in so many languages because I sure as hell can't understand them. Your buddies can either warn you on incoming enemy craft that you can clearly see already, or as you may know, spend most of their existence getting shot down by enemy fire. This is what feels like your team was made for, goddammit, and added obstacle for yourself, because I'm not fucking kidding, they're in constant danger! What gets me though is that besides the possibility for continues, your teammates rarely add to anything else. Like I would think if you rescue your bud, they would assist you in an upcoming obstacle, but no, it may look like they're firing at something, but trust me, they ain't hitting shit. I found this to be the most obnoxious in planets like Macbeth, where you got these towers that fire spectacularly damaging projectiles at your ass, and look, what the hell are you doing, Slippy? Shoot the fucking things! Oh, wait, where are you going? Composer Hajime Hirasawa did a remarkable job in replicating how an orchestra could enhance traveling in the vast ocean of space. Yes, even Sector Y, the literal space ocean with the space manta rays, space amoebas, and a space whale that shat out power-ups. Star Fox 2 also introduced the new team of rivals, Star Wolf hired by Andros to take Star Fox down. These encounters were pure dogfighting. You move all over the place until you get the right shot and then take them out with a well-timed laser. It's intense, but satisfying to shoot them down. Your main objective is to stop Andros, but what's probably more important is protecting Corneria. Andros is a real shitty shit in this game sending out an unrelenting amount of enemy forces towards the planet. As Star Fox, you need to intercept whatever is approaching the planet currently, wipe out battle stations that can launch attacks at Corneria from a distance, and neutralize bases that Andros has established on other planets. If Corneria's damage level reaches 100%, the game ends immediately, so it's important to prioritize threats based on proximity and current danger level. From the sound of it, Star Fox 2 is a bit more adrenalized and frantic than the original, seeing as you basically have a countdown of sorts with Corneria's line of defense, and if you slack off too much, that's uh, Armageddon. Star Fox 2 was never actually released, or finished for that matter. Yeah, it was cancelled at the last possible minute in favor of focusing the company's priorities on the upcoming Nintendo 64. What I've been playing is one of the few prototype ROMs that's been swimming on the internet for some time now, fully translated and given the reproduction treatment. I have two of them actually, one I bought this past too many games, and one a fan donated to me just 10 minutes after I bought this one for myself. Fuck my life. And now, your feature presentation from Nintendo Power. The eagle has landed. I repeat, the eagle has landed. You <laughs> Word on the street is, you got a new Nintendo 64 game coming out. Could you be a little more specific? We got a lot of new games coming out. Star Fox 64. Ah. Test pilot boy. You wanna know about Star Fox 64, eh? Uh, yeah, and you'd better tell us all you know. Or else. Or else what? Or else. Plumber boy here. Get. <laughs> Leave Mario out of this. <laughs> you made your point. The 90s were weird, but commercials and promotional material were awesome. Unless it was about a guy exploding from eating too much shit. 
and the new rumble pack that made it felt like you were in the middle of action. Which you know only meant your controller shook when something happened on screen, but that was a new thing at the time. Nuh -uh. Yeah. There's more welcoming flavor text between Fox and his crew when you're all in the middle of action, but there's still very little in terms of narrative. Your Star Fox, your Space Fighters, now go stop Andros, and only at very brief moments does it feel this game yearns to be something more, like when you're on Planet Katina in the mission that was definitely, certainly, absolutely not inspired by Independence Day. Fox reunites with his old buddy Bill, they say hi to each other and help each other out, and that's that. And the same applies to this female space fighter called Cat, who Falco seems to have some affiliation with, but it's never expanded upon, and I wonder, was it because of time restraints or something? If there was something there to start with at all, I mean? Now, I don't think the game suffers on the whole because of this, I'm just curious. Now, I've could've gone without the Landmaster and Blue Marine sections, altogether they're only in three of the 15 stages, but they're not Arwing material. I find it difficult to aim my shots with the Landmaster turret because of the rough terrain repeatedly gyrating my reticle, and the Blue Marine is a real slog and the stage is full of lag. Better than the Landmaster, but it's all dark and wet here. If you don't want to visit Titania to save Slippy's dumbass, you have to kill this boss before Slippy gets a chance to do anything stupid. Even if the voice acting is comically over the top, King Louise, what is that? Or if it looks like everyone's not so much chattering, but more like they're freezing to death. It can help you complete the mission objective in certain stages to stay on course, so keep them alive, even if you really don't want to at times, because let's face it, Slippy's accident prone, Peppy's sort of there, and Falco's a massive cock mongrel. Gee, I've been saved by Fox, how swell. Now, you can always go out of your way to snag an original Nintendo 64 cart and help maybe even a rumble pack to really get all 1997 in this bitch. The rumble pack lets you feel different degrees of vibration. What's even cooler is when you crash your vehicle, that's when you really feel the vibration. This is incredible! If you yearn for some good old fashioned arcade ass space shooting, Star Fox 64 can help fill that void. On the off chance you haven't already played this nearly 20 year old game. There's a chance you couldn't, just look at me, I mean fuck. But the fact that I think it's still a good game even today speaks for its quality, and if you can, get the 3D version if possible. And try not to spend more than $40. It's a great game, just not $80 to $100 worth. But this game would never come to be, and this is where Nintendo steps back in. According to interviews, Shigeru Miyamoto thought the main protagonist of Dinosaur Planet looked remarkably like Fox McCloud, so he, along with Nintendo, requested that Rare transform the game into a Star Fox title. Rare said fuck it and went with it. I guess if you want to make sure your relations with partners continue, you better say fucking yes. Though another reason for the change could be because Rare was being approached by other companies at the time and Nintendo was aware of that, so they requested the Star Fox makeover to keep Rare with Nintendo for a little while longer, which wasn't much longer, Microsoft would buy out Rare in 2002. Managing to collect them all would give Dinosaur Planet the edge it needs to defeat General Scales and Crystal begins her hunt. That is until five minutes after collecting the first spirit, an unknown force traps Crystal in this crystal, and that's all she wrote. A plus for trying, I guess. And if you're wondering why Fox would bother using a staff instead of space weapons, General Pepper has you covered, and it's stupid. This mission is about saving the planet, not blowing it up. It requires a different tactic. Try using your head. <laughs> yeah, so Fox is stuck with the spear. Though reluctant, and at times I wonder why Fox seriously continues with how much he snarks about a situation, Fox and Tricky make their way to the different regions of Dinosaur Planet, helping out the locals with their problems when appropriate, and collecting the magical MacGuffins when they manage to get them, and that's all we're getting for this one, folks. Star Fox Adventure story is elementary up the wazoo. Honestly, I thought Crystal would have much more significance here, seeing as we start the game as her and she's on the damn cover next to Fox, but as soon as she gets captured about half an hour in, that is it. Saving her is just an added benefit for Fox's mission, as it's love at first sight when he encounters her prison soul on top of the Crystal Palace, and spoiler warning, Crystal doesn't get saved until the end of the game, where General Scales is suddenly, anticlimatically, pushed aside to reveal the true villain of the story, Andros. You thought Twilight Princess was bad, at least you fought Zayn in that game, Andros just appears like a goddamn magic trick, and then Falco suddenly shows up to save your ass after the final battle. As a Star Fox player, I was so bewildered, and I can't imagine what early adopters were thinking if they jumped into this game with no prior Star Fox experience. I'm not kidding, this is what fights amount to for the whole game. <laughs> even extending to Tricky, your partner in crime for the whole adventure, who is your solution to any time you need to dig something out of the ground or burn Bramble to ashes. He's an annoying shit fiend every other time, using the same often repeated voice clips to point out a bad guy wanting to play with his ball when he's hungry for shrooms, and snoring loud as hell when he falls asleep. I'm sorry, am I boring you? It's packed with great looking set pieces, the only low points being inside the dungeons where they get a little samey for my liking. The frame rate is a consistent 60 frames per second, damn impressive with these sort of environments, and Fox never looked so detailed before this game. I don't think the rest of the crew looks too bad either, but Peppy looks like he smells old, and Slippy's 
blank stare is akin to someone repeatedly witnessing the apocalypse. Let's not put away our GameCube controllers just yet. There's still another Star Fox title to look at for the lunchbox. Star Fox. Holy mother. That's my Metroid alarm! I installed back in 2010 after the ran. Put it on screen! All right, I guess it's out now. So spin off or not, that's taking priority. What? I already saw the game. What was? Oh, that's right. Okay, my apologies, Star Fox fans. I'm making two detours. Firstly, my fucking video upscaler shorted out. It's what I use when I want to record games from older consoles using HDMI. It just makes it easier when all I need to use is my HDMI capture card. But then that started to flip out too. It wouldn't read my video signals of anything I plugged into it, and even when I got picture on the rare occasion, there was no sound. So not only did I have to get a new upscaler, I had to get a new HD60 capture card too. It took a few days, but I got this new upscaler. Looks great, came from Japan, meaning I can't do much of this instruction manual, but that's what the internet is for. But then the damn thing needed a firmware update, which I could only do by downloading a file from the official website, placing it inside a micro SD card to put inside the micro SD slot of this device, but the upscaler didn't come with once and I had to get a micro SD card. I should also note that the upscaler has a USB port to connect directly to the computer, but I guess it doesn't mean anything in updating it. I just want some nice footage from the GameCube, Jesus. Dinosaur Planet, now officially known as Saria, has been liberated from the unexpected tyranny of Andross and the Sharp Claws, peace has been restored to the Lilat system, and the Star Fox crew fully reunited as their next adventure awaits, now with the newly recruited Crystal, who wished to remain with the team as thanks for Fox saving her at the end of the previous adventure. Now we have a brand new Star Fox team, meaning Crystal replacing Peppy, who is more comfortable being mission control via the Gray Fox nowadays, his old age is finally caught up with the old hair, and the development team wants to use all the time they can to give Fox all sorts of sexual tension. Not that it has any overall significance in the story here. The Aperoids. You ever seen Star Trek Next Generation? Think of them as the Borg. Star Fox Assault lacks in an elaborative story, which to be fair, has been the case since the SNES original, but it picks up the slack and character interaction and everybody's got something to say in Star Fox Assault, from the team trading jokes and jabs at each other during missions, to Star Wolf having a dick measuring contest in a dogfight near their home base. The manual still has quick synopsis synopses of previous adventures, so you can always read those to catch up. The writing is pretty good. I kind of like how this game highlights how annoying Slippy was in Star Fox 64, so they make him more of a hard ass here in response. Like, even he gets sick of everyone's shit after a while. Try not to make a mess of things, Slippy. You would have about those, seriously. Shut your beak for once. Some lines, especially from Fox, are hokey as shit, and with the more serious tone in mind, it's, it's, it's bad at points. She tried to bypass evolution by stealing souls. But you have to be born with one. Our developers are not rare this time. It's Namco, yeah, of uh, Pac-Man fame, among a shitload of other things. You see, you can even collect a little special flags from Rally X to improve your score, and you can unlock Xevious when you collect every silver medal in the game. I thought the obvious choice would be Galaga, but maybe that was too obvious. Then at times, we're required to travel on foot and blast enemies out of their socks with an arsenal of weapons. It's kind of like Star Fox Adventures, only Fox actually brings a fucking gun this time around, thank God. Got a radar that can help you spot enemies, and it does a good job telling you where your next objective is located. I don't like how the map takes up the middle of the screen when you're looking for shit. I gave Echo the Dolphin on the Dreamcast shit for that, and I'm giving Star Fox Assault similar shit. There's a bit of an auto lock on, it's sort of picky with distance and not as reliable as manually hitting the button yourself, I find. Kind of like Shadow the Hedgehog, but with better controls. Now, if you're willing to deal with tank controls, I mean, maybe you're okay with that, who knows? I don't think the on-foot missions are too bad. I can aim, shoot, and move around just fine after I get accustomed to them, which didn't take me very long at all. Mechanically, these missions are sound. They could have used more variety. There's only so many hatchers I can blow up before I begin to wonder when the mission ends, and if you die, you gotta shoot them all down again, so fuck that. You know what? The multiplayer isn't too bad either. I know I didn't really dive into the multiplayer content of Star Fox 64, but there's only so much I can do about that when everyone else around me is busy doing their own thing. But I managed to drag Mark in here for some multiplayer hijinks, and it was damn good. And if you got family and friends who want to take each other on within a 11 year old GameCube title. Hey, you just got another reason to buy the game, I think. Okay, 2006 would be the last time Star Fox would see some attention until the release of Star Fox Zero on the Wii U a few months back. Was it a result of waning popularity? Did this game have something to do with the dry spell? I didn't know. I never played this one until now. And this was the one I knew very little about. And there's a download play option, but trying to get just even one person with a Nintendo DS is laughable. Lest I want to knock on some random neighbor's doors to see if they have a Nintendo DS and want to spend some time on Star Fox Command. Nah, I'll stick with single player for this video. And I'm going to start there before heading into the plot of this game. Is that cool? 
All right then, but I wanted to tackle the controls firstly. It's a first party Nintendo flagship title on a gimmicky handheld, and that means Nintendo feels they need to use that gimmick, goddammit. Basically, it's Star Fox controls, but you use the touch screen for everything, except the fire button. You can use any button for that one, the triggers, face buttons, even the D-pad. While doing this, you're also protecting the Great Fox, your HQ. If so much as one small fry reaches the damn thing, it explodes, and that's game over. I could have sworn this thing had a defensive laser of some sort. Granted, you can pick up missiles on the map to give it some form of defense, but sheesh, don't be such a bitch, Rob. I was kind of scared at first, thinking this was going to be some sort of real-time strategy game of the sort, but no, nah, it's, it's really nothing to worry about. You just drag your ship like so with a stylus and shoot bad guys down. On certain maps, you may even face a boss, who will challenge you in some fashion, but with the sole exception of the final boss's true form, nothing here will make you run for your money. All right, the gameplay's out of the way. Can we talk about this story now for a second here? Okay, before we do that, I want to call attention to something. There's no voice acting in Star Fox Command. Characters are back to using those weird animal noises from the SNES game. It's nostalgic, but Command also gives you the ability to use your own voice recordings. Don't get too excited. It's not like you can fully voice everyone here. It just takes a small sample of your voice and garbles it up into a distorted mess that changes the pitch depending on the character. Did you know that a barrel roll was not actually a barrel roll, but an aileron roll? But for some immature fun, you can also use this as a voice sample. Uh... Now we got something I like to call Star Fox Belch on Command. <laughs> I'm 29. Hey, roll your eyes at me all you want. It makes this game's plot a lot more entertaining because what the shit is going on here? Firstly, the fact that the Star Fox team has split up means nothing. As soon as the new threat in the Lila system emerges, the Angler Army, the most inconsequential villains in the history of Star Fox by far, Fox can get in contact with his old friends and it's like nothing ever changed. Everyone's welcome with open arms. Then why in God's name they split up in the first place? You can end up not reuniting Star Fox at all and join up with Star Wolf to take down the angler threat. At one point out of nowhere, you can see what Falco was doing with his time and take part in an adventure that has nothing to do with anything. And oh my God, poor Crystal. This game has something out for her. The reasoning for her separation from Fox was because Fox was afraid something might happen to her in the battlefield, which is absurd. So I guess Slippy, Falco and Peppy were expendable, you furry fuckhead. So there could either be more unnecessary sexual tension between Fox and Crystal as the two attempt to make amends, or Crystal can be a total pariah and ditch Fox for Panther, which causes her to get shunned by the entire Lilac community, which then causes her to ditch Panther and Star Wolf altogether and become a lone bounty hunter, changing her name from Crystal to Cursed. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is this? And I say poor Crystal, poor Fox. I mean, his justification for kicking Crystal off the team is shit but he gets his ass emotionally handed to him depending on the story. He doesn't take Crystal leaving him well. Look at him! This is the same calm and collected badass from Star Fox 64, Adventure, and Assault, and now he's been reduced to a mumbling crybaby, inviting Falco over to drink his sorrows away and leaving Star Fox at one point to become a G-Zero racer. What is this game? After Star Fox Command, the series just fell off the face of Corneria. It's been a 10 year gap between Command and Star Fox Zero. That should speak for itself. Honestly, I think they just had no idea what to do with Fox and his crew, and to fans of certain franchises, that sounds awfully familiar, I bet. I think we got to a point where people were recognizing Fox and Falco more from the Smash Brothers series than, you know, Star Fox. It seemed Nintendo had a lot of faith in this one. I remember the sheer amount of dedication it got during Nintendo Direct. So look at this cute puppet show. There was even a 15 minute animated short acting as a prologue to the game. I love this cartoon. I wouldn't mind an animated series set up like this. Got Star Fox suiting up for the upcoming adventure, trading insults and jokes with his fellow crewmates, and it's only a matter of time before the Call of Duty arrives and soon they head out to protect the Lilat system from Andross's impeding army. And that's another thing. Star Fox Zero is another goddamn reboot. Now, I don't know how the fuck they were supposed to continue after Command and its plots, so I can understand why they felt the need to reboot, but I also don't think it would have hurt the franchise if they continued on with the previous continuity. There was barely any there in the first place, you know, like I said before. Just continue on after Assault and completely ignore Command. It's as simple as that, I think. And what's better to enjoy than Star Fox 64? 
Star Fox Zero is Star Fox 64 again. Not one to one the same, of course, there are enough deviations to make Zero stand out in some essence, but it borrows so many cues from 64, it's like Star Fox 64 3D2. But it also has elements of the original Super Nintendo game, which Star Fox 64 was a reboot of, so it's like we got a reboot reboot. And then there's the Black R-Wing, my personal favorite. It takes about two to three times more damage, but it dishes out two to three times is more damage. It's the Berserker R-Wing. As long as I play carefully, everything in front of me, no matter the planet, shall face obliteration. Corneria, Titania, Ficina, the asteroid field. It's cool to see Fortuna again in all of its jungle glory. And they even brought back that dick-headed, twin-headed bird dragon from the SNES game. What a momentous occasion. Now fuck off and die. And I guess it's finally time to get into that. Now, all that mumbo jumbo that I just went into detail with, you know, that's all there for you to enjoy if you pick this game up and assuming you're able to fully accept and grasp the biggest factor of Star Fox Zero and that's the motion control. Star Fox Zero utilizes the Wii U gamepad and damn does it utilize the Wii U gamepad. I was worried about that, not gonna lie, because I thought Star Fox Zero was gonna use a gyroscope like how Star Fox 64 3D clumsily did, where the gyro didn't just control your aiming reticle, but also your whole fucking ship. For the somersault and U-turn, they emphasize how you can tilt both the left and right sticks together to perform the maneuvers, but that shit is downright clumsy. Now, tilting the right stick up or down to boost or break respectively, that's fine, I can do that, but this, no, fuck no. This game heavily recommends that you use the cockpit view for precise aiming, and that's good and all, but the cockpit view is only viewable on the gamepad and without a means to switch the screens around in Star Fox Zero, you are bopping your head up and down between the two screens constantly. Camera remains fixed, giving you a constant look at your opponent, but to actually steer your ship to where you need to go during this, you have to use the cockpit view on the gamepad. This is where you're switching views all the time. You stare at the gamepad to get a shot and you stare at the TV to pay attention to your surroundings. In a heated dogfight, it's awkward. Like when you're facing off against Star Wolf, I don't even bother trying to chase them down. I let them come to me, somersault over them, and use a little time I have to pump them full of lasers because I don't want to keep tilting my head like a hyperactive pigeon. So I'd look for a cheap physical copy if you can find it, which seems to hover around the 30 to $40 mark. I mean, those also come with Star Fox Guard and they're all bundled with the physical copies of the game. I'll be frank, didn't spend much time on this because it's tower defense and nothing but. And I, there's nothing wrong with tower defense. I just like my console games to have a little more a substance, I guess that's one way of putting it. You defend your mining facility from these unrelenting but oh so adorable robots by shooting them the hell and back with your heavily armed video cameras. Shit, if only I was this equipped in a Five Nights at Freddy's game. But from what I've seen, Star Fox Zero didn't sell very well. It sold miserably in Japan. And while North America and Europe fared better, Numbers were still low because it was released on a console that, let's not kid ourselves, is pretty much dead and has been on the decline for a couple of years now. At the risk of dating this video immediately, where in God's name is that NX reveal? You see, if I bring mention to it, then I'm sure it will happen within the next few days. At least I fucking hope so. Maybe you feel a bit nostalgic. I like that feeling. But what else have I tackled before that can elicit that sort of response, I wonder? Of course. God fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you gotta play that one because that actually hits you really hard. Oh shit! But I wonder if it caught it. <laughs>